I, Stephanie Bain, Stephanie Bain, I have a books, 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 I, I, I'm a book addict. There's so many books. <laughs> Hello everyone, today's video is going to be the pros and cons of having a ginormous TBR. Anyway, let's get to the point. I have a ginormous TBR pile. And this year, I am going to truly minimize it. But first, I want to talk about the pros of having a very large TBR pile. Pro number one is the fact that I am a very contradicting person. And I also like to change my mind constantly. So sometimes I'll be like, yeah, I don't feel like reading any young adult. And I'll pick nothing but adult books. And then more than likely I'm going to read nothing but young adult because I changed my mind. It's a flaw of my human nature. But uh, that's something I really do love about having a ginormous TBR is the fact that you could just stop what you're reading if you're not enjoying it because it's just not fitting it. And you can peruse your personal library. <laughs> I find myself reading a lot more outside of my like comfort zone, you know, because like I love, you know, paranormal. I use I love vampire books. I've always loved witches and all that stuff. And it's just so much fun. But having a big TBR, I keep looking at them. and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to try out something different today. Now, of course, there are a lot of cons to having a ginormous TBR, and one of them is the pressure to read all of these books. I don't know why. Like, I just feel like right now I do want to minimize how many I have. I would like to keep this the biggest shelf here, just my TBRs, and a good, like, you know, 20 to 30 books can fit on here depending on the sizes. But I feel a lot of pressure to, like, hurry up, read my books, and get them, like... Obviously, this will eventually become a red shelf. I do have more red than unread, but I still have a crap ton. And it's not even like I've got, I've collected a lot of these obviously over time. Before I started my booktube, I had about 40 unread books. I had one shelf and they were like double stacked in front of each other and it was kind of full. So then once I got into booktube, it does make you want to buy more but not because of like showing off or anything to do with that. It's just I want to read more now that I have a booktube channel. So I've started buying more. And even though I'm, I, you know, I'm reading pretty well every month on average between five to ten books, which I just need to, I want, I don't need, I'm sorry if you hear my phone. I don't need, I want to read all of these books and then of course naturally little by little I'm gonna find a book that I just truly disliked I'll unhaul it but you know I need to work on this this beautiful shelf of mine which if you're wondering I got at Ikea for $30 super sturdy that really hurt um, so the second part of this video is going to be an actual TBR shelf tour now, I've done one of these, but that's when I used to have the small, like, three shelf, and I maybe only had, like, 70 unread books. I have close to 130 right now. I'm actually going to show you all of the books that I have, but I'm going to be doing it a little differently. I saw The Price is Wong do this, and it's a tour without actually showing you individual, like, the, I'm going to show you all the books, but I'm not going to show you them on the shelf. I'm going to give you an overview of my bookshelf, how I have it organized, and I'm going to sit down and show you all of the books that I have. So this is going to take a while, but I'm actually really excited. Like, I don't know why. Yeah, I'm going to feel the pressure of, like, all of these books. So it's going to be insane. And also look up in, like, the next coming weeks, I'm going to be doing an updated, like, red shelf tour because uh, it's changed a lot and I want to do it for the beginning of the year so at the end of the year I can show you how my red shelf has changed and how my TBR shelf has changed because more than likely if I keep to my goal this right here <sighs> shall be mostly reds and only one of these shelves will be my TBR shelf instead of bookshelf. So let me show you the overview. So this is my shelf. Wait, and I have more books down there, but the chair I was just filming on is in the way. So, 
how I have this organized is honestly no particular order. Obviously, I've read the first three. These are unread. Those are like children's books. And then I have, these are kind of like the ones I want to read more. These three books are not mine, actually. Those are my nephews. And then these are my TBR for the current month. I usually just keep them on top of something else. That is a haul pile. I have yet to haul. Most of them are Christmas. Uh, and then series that I do want to finish reading because I have them there. I want to do them. And then I go into paperbacks minus the one ginormous hardcover that really doesn't fit anywhere else. And then hardcovers, kind of, sort of, not really in color formation. I just had to fix them the way they fit best. And then onto my nightstand. Another ginormous pile with my current read, which I'm so loving right now. It's like my favorite one out of the five that I've read. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. All by J.K. Rowling. Rowling, Rowling, whatever it is. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Anne Sexton, The Complete Works by Anne Sexton. And a crap ton of children's books that I will show all of them to you. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I got his name for a minute. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm by, what is it, Kate Douglas Wiggin. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. The Story of Dr. Doolittle by Hugh Lofting. Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. White Fang by Jack London. Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess, and City of Heavenly Fire, and The Shadow Hunters Codex all by Cassandra Clare, and this one with Cassandra Clare and Joshua Lewis. House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Dearly Devoted Dexter by Jeff Lindsay. The Walking Dead, Rise of the Governor, and The Road to Woodbury by Robert Kirkman and J. Bonansinja. The Vampire Diaries, The Hunters, Volume 1, Phantom. Is The Hunters, Volume 2, Moonsong. The Hunters, Volume 3, Destiny Rising. All by L.J. Smith. I have The Ness Antico Cycle by S.L. Farrell, which consists of A Magic of Twilight, A Magic of Nightfall, and A Magic of Dawn. Little Children by Tom Perota, The Poison Tree by Erin Kelly, Winter Bloom by Tara Heavey, The Girl Who Played With Fire by Stieg Larsson, Cold Light by Jen Ashworth, The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, Janet Ivanovich is One for the Money, Julie and Julia by Julie Powell, the Almost Moon by Alice Sebold. Uh, the House of Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. Missing Solach by Mahmoud Dolatabadi. This Wicked World by Richard Lange. Naked Lunch by William S. Burroughs. Rain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. Well of Sorrows by Benjamin Tate. Uh, Strife, which is book nine in the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. Autumnal Tints by Henry David Thoreau. Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. Paper Towns by John Green. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by what's his name again? Stefan Chabowski. I have Percy Jackson the Lightning Thief and Percy Jackson Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan. Ink Death by Cornelia Funk. The Dead Father's Club by Matt Haig. In Sunlight and in Shadow by Mark Halperin. The Vampire Diaries, Stefan Diaries, Volume 3, The Craving by uh, L.J. Smith. 
Alan Hager's Children by Edward P. Jones, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith, Into the Wild by John Cracker, The Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy, which consists of The Summer I Turned Pretty, It's Not Summer Without You, and We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han, and Abundance of Catherine's by John Gray, The Balefire series by Kate Tiernan, which has A Chalice of Wind, A Circle of Ashes, A Feather of Stone, and A Necklace of Water, Alice 14, Lean Mean 13, by Janet Ivanovich, Flowers in the Attic, Petals in the Wind, and Music in the Night, all by V.C. Andrew, Kill Bin Laden, a novel based on true events by John Wiseman, and Neuropath by R. Scott Baker, Devil's Kiss by Sarwat Chavez, Uglies by Scott Westerfeld, Elizabeth I, a novel by Margaret George, It's by Stephen King, The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson, my hair keeps getting in my way, Lucifer's Tears by James Thompson, A Faithful Place by Tana French, Come and Find Me by Haley Ephron, The Ego Boom by Stieg Mack and Leanne George, Snapshots by William Norris, In Malice Quite Close by Brandy Lynn Ryder, Triple Crossing by Sebastian Rotella, Elegy for April by Benjamin Black, The Omen Machine by Terry Goodkind, A Taint in the Blood by S.M. Sterling, Crimes by Moonlight by a Ton of Authors, A Dry Eyes by Bill Evans and Mariana Jameson, The Wreckage by Michael Robotha, The Time Weaver by Shayna Abe, The Girl Who Could Speak for the Dead by Paul Elwerk, Natural Selection by Dave Friedman, Storm Damage by Ed Kovacs, Sizzling 16 by Janet Ivanovich, The Overton Window by Glenn Beck, Delirious by Daniel Palmer, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, Russian Winter by Daphne Colette, Two Graves by Preston and Child, A Great Soldier of the War by Mark Alfred, The Zeros My Misadventures in the Decade Wall Street Went Insane by Randall Lane, The Day the Fall Stood Still by Kathy Marie Buckingham, Water Seeker by Kimberly Willis Holt, the Lost Symbol by Dan Brown. The Lost Angel by Javier Sierra. Severed by Lauren DeStefino. Dark Lady by Richie North Patterson. Alice Bliss, a novel by Laura Harrington. The Wager by Donna Jo Napoli. Finger Looking 15 by Janet Ivanovich. Atonement by Anne McGowan. McGowan? McGowan? My Paper Chase by Harold Evans. Michael Crichton and Richard Preston, a uh, micro. Dracula, The Undead by Dacher Stoker. Deadfall by Robert Liparulo. Explosive 18 by Janet Ivanovich. Shadows Bright as Glass by Amy Ellis Nutt. Hot Time in the Old Town by Edward P. Kahn. Something Borrowed by Emily Griffin. The Lion is In by Delia Ephron. Trial by Fire by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. War of the Witches by Maite Carranza. Endgame The Calling by James Frey and Nils Johnson Shelton. Never Knowing by Chevy Stevens. The Fear Index by Robert Harris. The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. The Creation of Eve by Lynn Cullen. A Good American by Alex George. Laura Lamont's Life in Pictures by Emma Straw. Learning to Live Out Loud by Piper Laurie. And Columbus The Four Voyages by Lawrence Bergreen. That's my To Be Read shelf and stack. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will put the number of unread read somewhere along the way so at the end of the year when you know I've hopefully read the majority of them I can update you on how well or how bad I did I don't plan on really buying a lot of books I mean of course you might get one here one there other than that I really have no intentions but I will see you guys next time and have a great day bye